Hey everyone, Rich Mawson from Isotope, here again at the Plugin Boutique Studios, and today I want to tell you about the interesting new features in our latest release, Neutron 3. We've introduced some really interesting features into Neutron 3, including Mix Assistant and Balance and Sculptor, and we've also made some improvements to the GUI. It's now resizable. We've also improved the performance of the plugin um, to make it much more efficient and user-friendly across your entire session. So first, let's take a look at Sculptor. Sculptor is a new module that utilizes our spectral shaping technology. You can think of spectral shaping like a 32-band dynamic EQ with automatic thresholds and reduction levels. And basically what the algorithm does is it automatically tries to shape and mold your sound to one of 25 predetermined spectral curves. So the new Sculptor module in Neutron 3 helps to add clarity and polish to the audio that's passing through it. And as mentioned before, it uses spectral shaping to do that. And it's very simple and easy to use to get great sounding results that are natural and transparent. So if I open up Neutron 3, which I have here on my bass track, this is the vanilla version of the, the plugin here. Um, this is available in both standard and advanced. I've got nothing else set up in this instance of the plugin at this point. If I click on the plus symbol here and go down to Sculptor to select, the first thing that it does is it asks me to define what is the target shape that I want to achieve for my audio. And obviously you're free to choose whatever shape you like and be creative, but the idea here is that you apply a mode specific to the type of audio that you're treating. So in this case, I can click on the bass category and then I'm actually gonna enhance a bass guitar. So I click on the bass option as opposed to some of the other sub bass driven target curves. So I click on bass. And that's it, it's set up. You're given a small number of parameters that you actually need to control. You have a control that adjusts the intensity of the processing. Then you have a tone control, so you can make the output brighter or darker. And then the speed control is there to adjust the attack and release of the compression algorithm that's running in the background there. I'm just gonna have that set at zero, right, or 50% right now for the speed and zero for the tone. The other things I should point out is we also have these range controllers here that actually allow you to only apply the sculpting process to a specific frequency band. You can actually use this to specifically treat resonance or sibilance or other irregularities in the frequency spectrum where you wanna just tame those. So first of all, I'm gonna turn this off and listen to the before. Now let me isolate the bass track. Now you can hear that there are some variations as we all come to expect in the dynamics where some of the notes are much more prominent than others. Um, so I'm actually going to use, in this instance, going to use Sculptor to actually take out some of those, those low frequency dynamics and even things out of that and make things a lot more prominent in the mix. So if I turn the sculpting process back on again, um, I'm going to turn this up considerably to about 70. Um, I'm actually gonna add some brightness to this as well. I'm gonna dial that up to maybe 30%. Now, I'll take it back to the, the start of the track and press play. Now, obviously this is with sculpting on, then I'll bypass. So you can hear how it's leveled out those dynamics and just helped to improve the overall balance of the, of the bass guitar there. Um, now, the curve that you can see here, this orange curve with the white line, that's actually the composite view of the filtering that's actually actively being applied to the track. So that's actually showing you what's being done to the track. And the curves that you can see in the background, um, the darker curve that you can see in the background there is your input and the whiter curve is your output. Now, what I want to do is just take it back to the start there and I'll take solo off so that we can hear that in context with the mix as well. So this is with sculpting disabled. Now re-enabled sculptor, take it back from the top. So hopefully you, you can hear from what we've just done there with Sculptor on the bass track that it's helped to tame those low frequency dynamics that we were talking about. 
and essentially make it easier to hear the bass but keeping the, the low end nice and rich and full. Okay, so there's one other area in the mix that I want to just um, take a look at. I'm just going to home in on a bit of the piano track that's been recorded here. Let's just loop that region. And we'll open up an instance of Neutron that's on the piano track. Now again, this hasn't been set up with any other settings at this point. So I click on the plus button here, open up Sculptor, and this time obviously I'm going for keys and it's piano. So I'm gonna click on the piano option there. And uh, again, same interface as we had before. So what I'll do is I'll just play the piano track soloed and I'll just bypass Sculptor to begin with there. So you can hear the piano track itself is a little bit muddy. It sounds just ever so slightly muffled and I want to bring out the clarity there and just make this a really sort of rich, natural, clear sounding piano sound. So if I turn on Sculptor, we've obviously got the mode selected here and the detail or the, the amount of the processing that's been added here is at 50%. I'm going to dial that up to maybe 80%. I'm going to keep the tone as it is because the sculpting process for piano adds quite a lot of brightness anyway, so I don't actually really need to dial up any brightness. Um, now the speed control as it's set right now is pretty good. I don't want to take um, too much of the transients out of the stabs of the, the keyboard or the, the piano there. So let's just do an A-B comparison now that we've cranked that up. So bypassed, now enabled. So I'm going to take that back into context with the mix. The words are never clear, and always insincere, they're always insincere. And again, you can see the composite curve there of the filters actively doing, making the changes to the overall spectral balance of the, the audio. So there you can see I've applied Sculptor very, very quickly and easily and have achieved really great results without actually having to tweak too many parameters. So it's very quick and easy to get this to sound great and to just add that fine polish to, to the mix that you're working on. So thanks for taking the time today to check out the new features in Neutron 3. There are a whole host of features that we haven't had time to cover. However, for more information, check out PluginBoutique.com.